The Trelawney Multipurpose Stadium, located on the north coast of the land and wood of water, and this was built for the ICT Cricket World Cup. It has risen from its ruins to host this the Costa Cup Zone D doubleheader, started with this clash between Spot Valley High and Mushet High. Yes, a pretty hot day, of course, uh, here in Trelawney. The sun is out there, it's 32 degrees Celsius, and humidity, of course, standing at a good uh, so over 70%. Yeah, hello and welcome, of course, to the Trelawney Multipurpose Stadium here. My name is Gerard Morris-Seeley, and we're getting ready for this Zone D doubleheader. Of course, this encounter starting with uh, Spot Valley High against uh, Mushet High. Uh, of course, three games in this group, which will of obviously determine the spots that are being taken. William Nibu see the leaders taking on Cedric Titus a little bit later. Discovery Bay and Holland High are playing elsewhere, and that game will also be at 3.30 p.m. But for now, yeah, the focus is on Spot. Valley High versus Mushet High. Two of the 17 games in the Dakota Cup being played today are here. And yeah, we bring all the action for you. You won't want to miss it. So, of course, you know, this game, Spot Valley High versus Mushet High, second place on the table versus fifth place on the table. The clash of two Damians, Damian Nelson of Spot Valley, the coach, and Damian Clark, the coach of Mushet High. We'll hear from them now and hear how they're getting ready for this clash. Coach, uh, good start to the season so far for your team. Uh, when you come into this game, how are you looking to ensure that you keep that unbeaten record? All right. First thing, we're just happy knowing that in the last four to three seasons, we're not been so consistent. So we just come out here and try to play good football and represent ourselves, the school, and our family. Yeah, joint top of the table, of course, with William Nib, who are playing a little bit later on today. Uh, but how well have your boys been playing so far throughout the season? Yeah, it, it, it is a good preseason, and we have most boys are young. So we just teach them the basic fundamentals of the game and just try to be consistent. Yeah, first time you're playing at this venue, Trelawney Multipurpose yes. uh, Stadium. Uh, how happy are you about getting a chance to play you know, at a venue like this? It's a wonderful feeling, you know. It, for some of the boys, it's their first exposure on this stage. So I just tell them that just go out there and try not to be nervous and just play what we know and just try to get the three points today. Yeah, you're playing against Mushet High, of course, fifth place on the table right now. Uh, but of course, I'm sure you're not going to take them lightly. No, no, no. On the last game we played, uh, knowing that the team didn't have any points, we go like knowing that we win and uh, we, we see the results. It, it was a hard, hard fought win for us. So we tell them that to the, be consistent and just try to do what we know what we can do and just try to carry on the victory. Coach Clark, a new day, new chance for a victory. Uh, how prepared for you are this one? Well, um, we came here, there's a um, thing, there are some things in history that has been written and it has left a mark on generations. It says all is fear in war. So we are here prepared to fight and no one can expect nothing else other than a fight. Yeah. Of course, uh, you, 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 you haven't gotten a, a win as yet in this competition, but of course you've been able to score two goals. Came really close against Discovery Bay, lost that game 3-2. Is it a case where you just need your team to work on their finishing and of course creating more opportunities to score? Well, um, the, the, the youngsters, they lack the experience because, you know, they, this is a startup program. But um, if we are more clinical in front of goal, the scores would have been relatively different. Um, we would understand that we would have planned for a rough season based on where we are coming from. So um, losing three, we, the positives we have to take. We are getting closer. We scored two against. We have conceded about some, um, against some much fancier team. But we see the positives and we are encouraging them. And one day we'll tick in the right color. I hope it's today. Yeah, so you've heard from both coaches there, Damian Nelson, Spot Valley High at first, and then uh, Damian Clark, coach of uh, Mushet High. We are about uh, six minutes away from our 115 kickoff here at the Trelawney Multipurpose Stadium. We want to watch this one very closely, Spot Valley High, their joint 
leaders on the table with William Nim, nine points, so they're second behind them on goal difference. Mushet High yet to get a point in this competition. They've scored two goals two games ago, and yeah, they'll be hoping that they can uh, get one over Swat Valley. This one, historically, not in their favor, Mushet, but they'll be hoping that they can flip the script at least for today. Uh, let's head up now to our commentary team, led by Dean Smith. He's alongside Leger Williams, and they'll have the action for you. Yeah, this is the Trelawney Multipurpose Complex, of course, in Trelawney. A venue that in some minds have been neglected, but it's host for a wonderful doubleheader in schoolboy football for 2024, the Costa Cup action. Here's the standing in zone D. William Nib lead with nine points. Joined with Spot Valley, they have a better goal difference of plus nine to Spot Valley's plus six. Cedric Titus, they are in third position at the moment, rooted at the bottom. Holland, a new entrant in the Dacosta Cup, the and Mushet have not had any points so far. Here's the head to head Spot Valley versus Mushet. We go all the way back to 2016, Spot Valley uh, doing the double over them in 2017. Also getting the double of 5-2, one of the results there. 2018 again, Mushet though getting the better of Spot Valley on one occasion, the other game being a draw. 2022, Spot Valley whipping Mushet four goals to nil and a one nil win as well. Spot Valley definitely have been dominant, but as the coach mentioned, Mushet, they haven't been consistent in the competition. And let's see how they are able to fear in this encounter. Dean Smith, the name, and with me is Lejay Williams. What a great time we are having so far as we see the relic of the ICC 20 uh, World Cup in 2007 still being uh, the home of great sporting events, and this time in the Issa Schoolboy Football Competition. Yeah, this was a stadium that I was you know, proud to visit when the ICC World Cup was here in 2007. I, I was a young boy at that time, you know, around eight years old. And, you know, this was definitely a, a stadium that I, I really liked. It's been a shame that we haven't seen too much sports there. And hopefully an exciting game here today will be, you know, an opportunity for both schools and uh, all four schools to really come out and really show what they're doing. And it's also some quality teams also. Spot Valley doing really well in zone D so far in the Dacosta Cup and of course after that we'll have William Neighbor team who has really been pushing Trelawney forward one might say in the Dacosta Cup as of late as well so I think we're looking forward to two pretty good games today and I can't wait to see them. Yeah beautiful view we saw earlier seeing the aerial representation of this venue and when you walk along the Holland Halls, you, you definitely recognize that it's been underutilized, but there's a resurrection of sorts and the vision behind it. This particular broadcast, this particular doubleheader, you have to give them all the credit for that. So happy to be here as we see the teams greeting after the walkout. Spot Valley, the home team in their traditional red and Mushet in a brown shorts with white tops. The captains come to meet together with the referee and his assistants. Andre Farkasson, the man with the whistle, Garvin Carvalho, Shamar Campbell, the assistants, and the fourth official, Danian Parchment, the FIFA referee, did very well for Jamaica at the recent Olympics, being a part of the VAR team. That's a Damien Parchment. So, but Andre Farkasson, the man with the whistle in this particular encounter, the captains are there for Moshet, Osmond Holt, and Nathan Thompson for Spot Valley. Now this is the lineup for Spot Valley in this encounter in goal. Javid Grant, they have a back four of Malik Stewart, Nathan Thompson, Lesham Forbes, and Tayshon Johnson. Three in the middle of the park. Anthony Francis, Kenyatta Clark, the three gold man, and Orlando Wilson, he has two as well. And up top, Chrisano Lawrence, Stephen Mullings, and Tyree Curlew. 
Mullings with two assists, Curly with one goal. They're coached by Damian Nelson. Here's the lineup for Mushet. Osman Holt, he's the captain, he's in goal. Sarani Hunt. Keanu Calvin, Romar Chin, Devante Williams. As we see kickoff, action getting on the way. Thompson in the heart of the fence, having that one. Spot Valley trying to send that one forward, but the attacker, Stephen Mullings, was offside. Here's Mushet, trying to go forward. Throw goes the way of Spot Valley. Lesham Forbes, stamp that one forward. Still in possession is Spot Valley. They try to go from distance. Osmond Holt in goal for Machete, equal to the task. Osmond Holt, perhaps if you're familiar with track and field, you'd have heard that name. He has represented Jamaica at the Carifta Games in the Octathlon. Was a bronze medalist in the Decathlon at champs 2024 of course a part of the musha team that has been making great waves Shanoya douglas and johan romaldus smite some of the other names a part of that uh, musha track team Shanoya douglas of course getting a bronze medal at the world on 20 championships just concluded and that was in peru Nice to have you and all your track knowledge, Dean. Always nice and I think it will be interesting to see how Spot Valley go about this game. They're a team that, generally speaking, so far this season have scored many goals and they've won this one high. Here they come again, but broke it up in time by Mouchette. But they regain possession of Spot Valley. Unable to keep it in possession, the number nine, Tyree Curlew, has a solitary goal this season. Certainly will be looking to add to that tally in front of the cameras and all. Here's Mullings for Spot Valley. Unable to get by Sirani Hunt. Gets the ball back though, but Machete again. Putting themselves under all sorts of pressure is Machete. A bit too composed there from Machete. As he said, playing themselves into trouble and conceding a free kick. Uh, a, a throw in, I beg your pardon. Let's see what Spot Valley can do with this opportunity. Here's a throw in. Johnson releasing that one. Still high in the air. Played out by Romar Chin. But Spot Valley still in possession.
Whistle on the play on that occasion. The Jari Brown there bringing down Chrisana Lawrence. Here's the head coach of Spot Valley, Damien Nelson. Played for Rossi's in the Da Costa Cup. Played for a couple of uh, Premier League teams. Montego Bay United among them. Here's a kick sent in the area. Holt should come for this one. But he didn't. And uh, Orlando Wilson had a free header and unable to get it on target, Lejay. Yeah, and that's the first big... Yeah, that's the first big opportunity of the game so far. Wilson finding himself completely unmarked, and I think he really should have done better. Keeper found himself in absolutely no man's land. Yeah. And it was really an empty goal to aim for, but the header inaccurate, and quite a few things for Damian Clark, head coach of Moshet, to think about early in this contest. Holt does get that one easily on this occasion. Another throw for Spot Valley. Another infraction there. Curlew again. Being bodied. Yeah, the first seven minutes and change, I think, have been exclusively played in the defensive third of Moshet. Spot Valley, a team that I was mentioning, have scored quite a few goals in this season's Dakasta Cup, putting on some early pressure in this contest. Let's see what kind of delivery they'll be able to send in the area from this one. On the left side of their attack. Clark and Chrisana Lawrence among those ready to prowl. Sent above goal. Holt was willing just to see that one go over the top. Yeah, certainly too high that delivery. Not quite the delivery that we saw earlier. Which gave Wilson such a Spectacular chance to open the scoring. Good interception on that occasion by Johnson, but Machette trying to clear, still not able to. Forbes sends that one forward, but played it out of touch. The intended target was Chrisana Lawrence. As a, a few words for Forbes, but it's a throw in for Moshet now.
Perhaps the first time we've seen the ball. Well, the second time we've seen the ball in Spot Valley's half. Yeah, fair to say that their defenders have been extremely comfortable. I say as they give up a, an unnecessary corner. Could be a pretty good chance for Mushet to cause some danger and some havoc in that Spot Valley penalty area. From our chin. Went across, sent in the area. Forbes with the initial header and also with the follow-up clearance. But it's still in the possession of Mushet. Chin trying to keep it in play. Here's Mushet. Clark sends that one forward. And Stephen Mullins unable to get to the end of this one. Holt plays it out. Here's Chin. Had an easy pass, did Chin, but went the way of pressure. Captain play by Spot Valley. Kick there for from Paddy Foot, unable to meet any intended target. Shakes, unable to do the give and go. Mullings. And yeah, Davian Hines was offside on that occasion. He have to. After some promising play from Mushet, it must be said, over the last couple of minutes. Spot Valley asserting their dominance yet again. And here is Spot Valley's captain, Nathan Thomas, Nathan Thompson. Pandyfoot trying to play through Hines. Referee getting in the way of that one. And that's a brilliant ball over the top, actually. Nathan Thompson, Spot Valley's captain, has been a long-standing member of their Dacosta Cup team, operating the role as really the stopper, not really leaving that halfway line. Here's Johnson with the throw in. Sirani Hunt with the defensive header, but gives up a corner kick.
Kids Fox for Spot Valley. Ball played fall for Shakes. Can't get by the captain. Chin steps forward. But Mullings able to get by him. Chin did some good work to give him some problems though, but still in the position of Spot Valley. And Nathan Thompson made that Malik Stewart. Shielding that one out. It's a throw and it's taken. Mullings played it back to Clark and he booted it forward. Good movement from Cristiano Lawrence. Still in possession, Lawrence. Gets it to Clark. Just over a quarter of an hour gone in this one. Wilson goes all the way back to Stewart. He plays it forward. Mullings is onside and in glory land. And that was a good stop, you know, from Sarani Hunt right on time. Yeah, it was a block that had to be made. Mullings, I think, mulled over that shutter a bit too long. Here you see it fell to him. Could have hit it a tad earlier. But Hunt really got across, and that block, I think, stopped the opener in this game. Certainly. Mullings with the delivery sent in the area. Still not cleared. Here's Pont Valley. Anthony Francis with a wayward pass, and it's a throw in. And Mashed perhaps will be able to. Get some of the pressure off. Perhaps only momentarily though. Yeah, based on the trend that we've been seeing for the first 17 and a half minutes. Certainly seems as if Spot Valley will be the more imposing attacking team in this game. Referee is instructing Moshe to take the throw in from further back. Of course, they, they have to oblige. Oblige. Here's Pot Valley. Mullings. Wilson and Clark there. Perhaps side by side is a shot. Holt was there. Wilson trying to test the goalkeeper. That was a handled ball. A fraction there from Nathan Thompson. Managed to keep that one low. Keanu Calvin could have caused some problems had it been positioned a bit differently. Here's Mushet trying to grow in this one. Pandifoot trying to do some trickery. And they'll be giving away the ball. Here's Spot Valley. Ball sent for Mullings. Trying to get beyond Chin, but Chin was equal to the task. Johnson stopping the run of chin on that occasion. Chin certainly seems like a lively player down this left hand side for Mushet. All action defender. Shakes try 
Try to get to the paddy foot. Kirsten with the throw in for Mushet. Given directly to the Spot Valley player, Johnson. Giovanni Fagan there. Try the cheeky lob. That went out of touch. 21st minute of play still in the long in this uh, matchup here, the Trelawney Multipurpose Complex. Had a walk through Lejay, had the opportunity to go to the, the grandstand section, and I tell you, I really enjoyed the view from there, not only of the pitch, but also of the, the sea. And this venue certainly has a loads of potential, and I'm so happy that schoolboy football has been able to highlight that some more. And for a venue that was opened in 2007, it's the first time schoolboy football has been played at this venue. Unbelievable. I couldn't believe that particular statistic when I heard it, but it's never too late for a shot of rain. Not that I want rain here. Yeah, I think in... In, in this instance, it would be one of the worst things that could happen, despite the heat. Especially in our, con in our context, in our positioning. <laughs> but so big is the, the field here that the pitch could actually be positioned in a totally different alignment. And uh, that is a consideration for further football matches to be played. Of course, the cricket pitch beyond the halfway line, as you see, uh, the advertising boards there, that's pretty much where the cricket pitch is. And based on some prior commitments, uh, the orientation had to be aligned as such. And there's still space on the other side as well. So really expansive property. And uh, I'm so happy that the authorities have given the green light for this match. Here's a delivery. Glorious chance. Sent over the top. And the shooting boots. Perhaps we're left at home, wherever home is. And that was a lovely cross in from Mullings, you know. Really teasing delivery. So it's a cooling break. And the teams will be able to be refreshed. Of course, the title sponsor for the Costa Cup, Water. And that's a look at some of the spectators on the grandstand. I tell you what, Lejay, I had the opportunity to see the dressing rooms. And there was a particular air conditioning that uh, they had access to in the dressing room. And... Uh, not even at the National Stadium do the teams get that opportunity, that privilege. So, really great venue and uh, not a bad drive from Kingston. Certainly wouldn't be a bad drive from anywhere on the North Coast. Some of the individuals further west would love to come here as well. And I'm just putting that out there that this venue certainly can't be a relic only of the ICC Cricket World Cup held in 2007. Yeah, definitely agree with you there, Dean. A lot of potential in the facilities. Also, for a stadium that can hold so many people, a a an issue across the island would be parking, and this is one of the best venues in regards to that Ample as well. parking, yeah. Both teams emerging from that cooling break, which I can just assume was... Very well needed. Wouldn't mind one myself. Call for the goal kick. 
Johnson to Sean Johnson on the ball. Gets it to Mullings. I like Mullings. He's been really imposing himself. Curlew trying to get by a few players. Didn't manage to get it across in time. It's a goal kick again for Mushet. And that certainly will be a reprieve for Damien Clark, who admittedly would have liked to have been more consistent in the competition from a Mushet perspective. This is his first season. Started coaching in 2017, did Damien Clark. Was influenced by Luxley Reed, who was a part of the national setup at one point. Did some work at Cambridge United. Was involved in the primary school level as well. First time in the Dracosta Cup. And it's a learning experience for him. And for many of these players. Had a chat with him. He would have really preferred that more youthful players were a part of this setup this year. Quite a few of the players are in their final year. Of course, Osman Holt would be among them. But nonetheless, they are here. Here's a Spot Valley. Shot from distance. And that one came from the foot of Crisana Lawrence. Mushet giving that one away again. Here's Mullings. Wilson unable to get the return pass to him. Yeah, I think if Wilson took his head up just a bit, there was a free player parading down that left-hand side for Spot Valley. But did have an option both left and right, but the pass inaccurate in the end. Another wasted half chance for Spot Valley. Given away once more. Here's Kusana Lawrence. It's like Curly on the ball. Sarani Khan trying to give him some problems. Played out for a throw in. Another win high up for Spot Valley. Here comes Mullins again. Mullins on the ball with Chin. His opposite number eight trying to shake him. Too much on that one. As he tried to pirouette. away. And Chin has been stuck to Mullins all game. Shakes. Unable to bring that one under his spell. Shane gave away his boots. Give away the ball as well. Moshet still in possession. They were throwing in their own half.
and another. Spot Valley now in position. Anthony Francis trying to chase, gets it to Mullings. Finds Curlew, forced wide by Chin. Can he whip it across? Yes, he does. That ball was good. But there was a handled ball there. Looks to be from Kenyatta Clark. Or Kenyatta Clark. to find Mullings. Mullings has space, gets it across. Clark. It set up pr pretty well for him. Mullings again with another incisive run in behind. And a good pass as well to find his teammate Clark, but didn't really get over that half volley attempt. Essentially splicing that one over the crossbar. Another chance goes a begging. Hines, almost a good first touch there, but showed too much to the defender here. Spot Valley giving it away. Chin, the willing recipient of this throwing for Mouchette. Another feature of this venue is that perhaps it's the only field. Dangerous ball there. Well, the only danger was the fumble there from Javid Grant. As I was mentioning, the only field I'm hearing that the undersurface is entirely sand. So even in rainy conditions, it's able to hold up to the traffic and all of that. Here at the Trelawney Multipurpose Complex. Earlier this year, it was the host of the Trelawney Major League Final. It had a sizable crowd, I'm hearing as well. And there was rain in that final, and eventually the field stood up well especially in comparison to many other fields made of especially clay type soil or even loamy soil so a lot going on for this venue and we definitely hope it's not a white elephant even though it's painted white and the paint itself has stood up to the test of time here's the action back Wilson Lawrence was offside Not for the first time a Spot Valley player has been caught offside. Really threatening that last line of Mouchette, but sometimes the threat, I guess, is getting a bit too serious.
Thrown again for Mouchette. Vante Williams with the responsibility. Mullings, Chin got the better of this one. Tianta Clark with a lot of time on the ball there. Eventually played it forward. Osmond Holt coming forward and he played it out. Machette, they do get the throw in. Lands of Paddy Foot there with the crucial touch to play it onto Johnson. Here's a throw in and Malik. Stewart, not clearing as I'm sure Damien Harris would have liked. The ball! Oh my! Oh wow! How bizarre! What a reprieve for Jared Grant and Spot Valley! He was in no man's land, didn't have a firm pair of hands, but Mercy said no. Yeah, one, once that one was spiraling in the air, it always seemed as if he was going to give Grant issues. Hasn't had much to do, but when he has had to collect it, his handling has been a bit shaky. As Padifu trying to get on the end of this one, manages to keep it in. Shout here's Hunt. Hunt with the shot, blocked. Kayanta Clark. Curl who sent to chase now, but the man who had that ambitious effort from just inside or beyond the half line. Calvin there to take the throw in now for Mouchette. I'm not even quite sure if it was an effort, much more like a clearance. Something over the top and yeah, once he was in the air, it almost seemed destined as if the goalkeeper was going to make a mistake and in the end, I, I guess you can say it was a save well done. No matter how shaky that moment looked. on the ground Holt able to hold it in play Stewart to Johnson good ball Curlew on the end of it can he finish gets it to gets the shot off but Osmond Holt was able to save didn't have much power on it was a lovely pass though it really was here's another look at it lovely bit of skill there and here come Mushet Get across Mushet in the glory land oh they couldn't finish though and the ball is still alive. Perhaps the game coming alive in the last five minutes. Here's Mullings. Chin giving him some problems, but he manages to keep it alive. It's a throw in for Spot Valley. 
Moshe really coming to life in these last five minutes or so. And if the first one was a bit of a freaky, freakish opportunity, that one was a very well developed one. Burton was the number nine player there who spread it wide. And Grant, Spot Valley's keeper needs a bit of attention. Grant getting increasingly more busy over the last few minutes. Perhaps they're looking at the sports mix app. Well, there was a song with an album back in the days, the misrepresentation of Lauren Hill. I think generally there has been a misrepresentation of this facility. Many people have painted the picture that it's been totally in ruins, and that's not the case. No, I hate to cut you there, Dean, but... Being a music man myself, it's actually the miseducation of Larry Hill. You are right. But the misrepresentation, perhaps, more apt here. <laughs> Most definitely. <laughs> Got a few good songs on that album, Lejay. Yeah, most certainly. Let's see what Spot Valley can do good here. Another opportunity. Clark. Just well, it was Wilson on that occasion actually. Haven't been able to get the finish there. Had some pretty good chances, of course, the best of them perhaps being from Curlew, the number nine, Tyree Curlew. Forcing a save out of Osmond Holt. But there have been some clear cut chances that Spot Valley have made a meal of. And as is common in football, sometimes the team under immense pressure gets one opportunity. And justice is served.
corner kick for Spot Valley. Stephen Mullings with the delivery in the area. Holt got a hand to it and got a second clearance as well. Spot Valley trying to send it back in the area. Francis gets it to Lawrence. Lawrence can't get by Chin. From our Chin. Lawrence wins the throw in courtesy of Sirani Hunt. Lawrence there with some bit of skill. Pass didn't go through though. ticking away at the end of this first half and there we go yeah first half whistle in this encounter the of action in 2024 spot valley versus mushet high nil all at the half a game where spot valley definitely started the bright of the two teams mushet had their opportunities as well Perhaps two being better than the rest, you could say. Spot Valley having clear-cut opportunities, but unable to find the finishing. It's nil all at the half here at the Trelawney Multipurpose Complex. It's a the cost of action. Confirmation of the halftime score. Spot Valley nil. Mushed nil.
look at that view it's all in it the sea the mountains and the Trelawney multi-purpose complex and uh, there are some communities around it as well but La Liga that's on the view on Sportsmax 2 Hitafe versus the Ghanis Sunday 7 a.m. 8 in the Eastern Caribbean Athletic Bilbao versus Celta Vigo Sunday 9.15 a.m. 10.15 in the Eastern Caribbean and also on Sunday Villarreal versus Barcelona 11.30 12.30 in the Eastern Caribbean four on the day Rea Vallecano versus El Atleti Atletico Madrid 2 p.m. 3 in the Eastern Caribbean La Liga on Sportsmax 2 Getting ready for second half action here in Trelawney. Spot Valley versus Mushet. On the evidence of the first half, you definitely would expect Spot Valley to be the first team to score. That's based on how they play and how they transition and all. But Mushet, they've had their own opportunities. Dean Smith, the name in commentary, Lejay Williams one of the brightest minds as an analyst in Jamaica he's with me here not new to the venue as myself yeah but certainly new to it in terms of football and speaking of football I think Spot Valley maybe would be working on their finishing or a bit of their composure Here's Curl who trying to come forward. Sirani Hunt did well there to guide him away from the danger area. And the foul is eventually given. Was it inside the box? Seems so. Based on where Curl who ended. Might have been just outside and it was just outside dangerously close to conceding a penalty there yeah here's another look mm. Mm. that's why i thought it was a penalty initially he thought so as well he ensured that he put on a bit of theatrics that's part of is starting this as we see a confirmation of the yellow card for sarani hunt for that challenge but Spot Valley starting this second half just as how they spent most of the first on the front foot. Stephen Mullings with the responsibility for this cross. Chips it in the area. Clark. And Crisanio Lawrence there with the finish. And finally, Spot Valley. British of the opening goal in this encounter. And he loves it. I said that they would have spent most of their halftime team, team talks speaking on finishing, speaking on composure. Spot Valley, a team that certainly hasn't looked shy in front of goal so far this season bit of a surprise to see them not scoring that first half but just two minutes into the second they've certainly put that right here they come again well promised a bit more than they actually delivered on that occasion yeah Lawrence who had a couple of dangerous moments in that first half it was a set piece at Mushet struggled to deal with Spot Valley at a couple of bites at the cherry and Lawrence as you can see number seven strong in his back ultimate opportunist did really well to finish that one through the legs of a Spot Mushet defender as well Spot Valley come forward again I think they'll have to settle with the corner they don't they kept, kept it alive they win the they win the corner kick there through to 
for win Orlando Wilson. Incidentally, that's the goal number three for Cristiano Lawrence on the season. Here's a corner kick at the back post. Osman Holt, he did fumble at the initial take. They are still down for Mouchette. Perhaps an awkward fall. Didn't see much there. Gets it to the goal scorer, Lawrence. Gets in the area. Yeah, he was really going for that one. And Devante Williams brought him down in the area. He's really grown in confidence, Leger. Yeah, there was certainly a, a piece of doubt about their first appeal, which eventually led to their goal, Spot Valley. But Lawrence involved again, extremely direct. And I think that's about as clear cut as it can possibly get in terms of a penalty call and Spot Valley racking up the chances and a huge chance now to go 2 0 up in this contest. It will be Keanta Clark. Keanta Clark with three goals already this season and an assist. Can he convert from 12 yards? Osman Holt, multi-event specialist in track and field. Can he come up big in front of goal? He does! Big save! Clark has another opportunity! Still Clark! And finally! Oh, wow! Keep going! That's the lesson! And Clark taught it well. Yeah, it was a good save initially by Osmond Holt. Mind games were played, but I think the only winner on this occasion was Spot Valley and their number 10. It was a comfortable height initially. But that determination from Clark was first to it, didn't give up, and eventually took that one in. Four goals now on the season, and Spot Valley, who have been the better team for, I would say, 95% of this game, now have two goals and a very good lead to show for it. Mushet still without a point. Curlew. Clark once more. That was a huge chance, you know. It really was. Not sure what has happened to the defending of Mushet, but they're being carved open at this point. That was a huge, huge chance. Would have made it three goals in the opening eight minutes of this second half. It's actually going to be a corner. Seems as if it was a deflection that led that one going over. It's 
Spot Valley have really settled well in the opening minutes of the second half. Here's the delivery. Francis. Bulky player, Anthony Francis. Yeah, plays at the base of midfield, Francis, and must be said has had a pretty comfortable afternoon so far. Here's Williams who gave up the corner kick, gave it away the ball on that occasion. Clark rolls it across for Wilson. Good interception by Romar Chin. He streams forward now. Gets it to Pine. His control let him down. And Spot Valley able to go the other way now. Here's the opening scorer. There he was. Here's Clark. Johnson. Unable to keep it in. Here's Mochette. Losing the ball. Ball sent forward. Shakes. From distance once more. Traffic Grant able to hold on to this one. Yeah, look much more confident on that occasion as opposed to the first half. Francis Lesham Forbes gets it to Stewart Devante Williams has for company Lawrence who dispossesses him. Almost got the turn on him as well. Gets the throw in for Spot Valley. Clark tried to switch there, but Chin read it well. Chin goes from distance. Mouchette player down in the center circle. Confirmation of a yellow card that for number six for Spot Valley, Nathan Thompson.
Big clearance. Here's Mullings. Mullings! Unable to find the finish. Had opportunities, perhaps, from a different... The delivery, the initial delivery to him would have been different in the first half, but similar angles in the half space and again unable to release in time. Hunt gave it away. Curlew on the ball. Gets the call. Ramar Chin there bringing him down as he was trying to dazzle. Sent in the area. Header. And it was Nathan Thompson who sprinted and had a free header. The centre back. Well, well worked free kick routine from Spot Valley there. Yet another chance to go even further ahead as Mouchette make the first change of the afternoon. Davian Hines making way for Daniel Larson. Shielded well on that occasion by Nathan Thompson. So, another goal kick for Spot Valley. Francis. Ball sent forward. Here's Lawrence. Can he find the finish? Lawrence. Oh, that's not it. Was always stretching, always reaching Lawrence. I don't think he realized the time and space he had. Moshet goalkeeper Osman Holt stuck to his line. Could have really made that a 
pretty easy opportunity for Lawrence. I don't think he realized it at all. Here's another look at it. Carlo does have some tricks about him. Overzealous on that occasion. Keanu Calvin was found by him. Quite a few ma more matches, not only here, but all across the De Costa Cup. On a Saturday, definitely lots of matches to go wherever you are in Jamaica. Of course, outside of the urban area. More specifically in the De Costa Cup. Should be a good match, Central versus Clarendon, that at Effortville. Monroe College and Stets at Monroe. That's always a, a big match, big derby. Cool in break, indicated by referee Andre Farkasen. I think Moshet would need this cool in break more than Spot Valley. Spot Valley with so much momentum since the start of the second half. Two goals as well. Mushet really has been left in the proverbial dust in this second half so far. Yeah. He started it for Spot Valley. Kusana Lawrence came from this delivery in the area. Clark couldn't get it on, but it fell nicely for Lawrence who made no mistake from point blank range and that was the opening of scoring for Spot Valley that in the 47th minute he would also provide this moment as he darted in the area and Devante Williams hacked him down Clark though had his initial penalty saved he kept going and did find the finish as he turned Williams once more and fired past Osmond Holt. 2 0 in the space of eight minutes into the second half. Spot Valley well on their way to win number four of the season. And they will go on 12 points, of course. If William Nib also win later in their encounter against Cedric Titus, that's the parish derby I hear. They would be on 12 points as well, and depending on the goal difference in that encounter and the goals that Spot Valley score here, there might be a change in first and second 
or if Cedric Titus wins, they join William Nib on nine points. But still lots to see. Other action in the DeCosta Cup coming up today. St. Mary High and St. Mary Technical, that's a big derby. In the parish, Titchfield and Wycliffe Martin High. Wycliffe Martin was formerly Brimavale. Edwin Allen and Lennon, they face each other as well. McGrath and Dintil. And that should be a very interesting one in a the rather diminished group they are in only four teams in that group following two teams withdrawn from the competition action resumes here Clark had an easy option went the difficult route here's Lawrence tries to step over gets it to Curlew can he whip it across he does get it across Osmond Holt does enough to hold on to it. And all the better that he did as well. Spot Valley again bearing down on goal. Here come Mouchette. Well dealt with. Lawrence. Dispossessed. Clear down for Mushet. Looks to be Shaquille Shakes. It's a throw in for Spot Valley now. Curlew kept it in. Didn't have the best. Deliver back into the area though. It's a throw in for Mushet now. Chin has probably been Mushet's brightest hope, I think. Probably in both defense and attack. All action player. The left back. You'll have another throw in to take shortly. Have to agree with you on that one. I think you beat me to saying that by a few seconds. Sir Honey Hunt with that big punt in the air. Crisano, Lawrence now. Curlew was offside.
Francis not easily parted off the ball. Here's Mullings. Can he finally find the finish? Oh, yes, he can. He loves the half space. And he makes it. Three goals for Spot Valley. Finally getting the shot off at the right moment. And he has looked extremely dangerous all game also. Long busting run after long busting run. And he's found in his stride, looks up. Ferocious strike at the near post. And this 3-0 lead is no less than Spot Valley deserve. So Spot Valley now with three goals would be equal with William Nib on goal difference. Perhaps they definitely want some more insurance should the group be decided by that route. Well, one thing for sure, they're certainly ending this game atop Zone D in the Dakasta Cup. A perfect four from four wins. Here shakes. Gets by one, gets by another, but eventually the infraction. Captain there being brought down, Malik Stewart. Just under a quarter of an hour left in this one in normal time. Mullings trying to get by Calvin, gets the throw in. Or is it a... It's actually a foul. Here's the delivery. Played out well by, looks to be Calvin. Forbes to Lawrence. He was offside. And he miscontrolled as well. Foot. Goes from distance. Well saved by Javid Grant on that occasion. Seems as if movement in the air is his kryptonite, but he evaded that one well. Corner kick for Mouchette. This in the 80th minute. Not the best, but it does come to Paddyfoot. Gets a shot. Wide of the mark.
Not a change being made. Mullings, the goal scorer, one of the goal scorers. Exits and Antonio Wallace comes to replace him. Lawrence. Quick succession, just about the second, not third offside call against him. Hasn't mastered that art, the youngster. Shakes. Paddyfoot. Well defended by Nathan Thompson. Sends it forward. Curlew on the chase. Manages to turn. Gets it across. Well cleared by Calvin. Keanu Calvin. Throw and take in Wilson in the area, in the thick of things still. Forced outside. Francis tried to go from distance. Keanta Clark now trying to barge through. The substitute did get in his way there and tried a shot of his own. Wallace still in possession for Spot Valley. Foul call goes their way. From distance, was keeping a relatively comfortable height. A lot for Damien Clark to think about. Mushet heading to what would be their fourth loss from their four games this season. Third of those defeats, if this result were to stay the same without them scoring a goal as well. Despite a few flaky attempts, they haven't looked much like scoring either, Mushet. Curlo on the chase for Spot Valley. Hunt was there. Manages to win the corner kick. Change made there. Tyree Curlew. Chin. Solid as ever. Lynch, the player brought in for Spot Valley, the number 19.
Central Tank just warming up in the background. Parish Derby comes up next in this double header. Here the Trelawney multi purpose complex. Lynch gets away from Hunt. Did get the shot off as well. percent in the area and the attempted clearance wasn't much of one almost put Osman Holt under some form of pressure from Hunt there the number three for Mouchette it's another corner kick Here's the delivery. Lawrence. Doing well. Gets it across. The header from Clark over the top. It was a really good cross from Lawrence. Clark looking to get his second of the game. And he has had opportunities. I think he would be my leading candidate for man of the match as well. Clark, Spot Valley's number 10 has been extremely influential, a goal and an assist. As we see Mouchette preparing a couple of changes. Here are the changes. Can confirm that Shakes, one of the players to leave for Mouchette. Shaquille Shakes, replaced by seemingly number 21, Jaden Earl. Alanza Panifoot also exiting. He's replaced by number 14, Tavin Brown. Here's Clark. Good play from Hunt. Substitute getting a taste of the action. Calvin. Point of the mark. Final minute in normal time. Here's the at moment. Lawrence driving in the area. Brought down by Williams. Clark stepped forward. Initially denied. But delays not denial. On the second time of asking. Keanta Clark with the second goal of the afternoon, his fourth for the season. That's the Sportsmax app moment brought to you by the Sportsmax app.
Well, mouthing that he didn't know he was offside. That's really been his modus operandi. Three additional minutes to be played in this one. Again, Lawrence offside. More substitutions being made. Lawrence gets it across. Oh, wow. And what an impact sub that would have been. The number 21 who came on had a glorious opportunity to make it four. Fosput Valley after Lawrence whipped it across. Turn. Dispossess. Beyond the three additional minutes. Expect the final whistle at any moment now. And Andre Ferguson has seen enough of this one. Opening game here of the doubleheader at the Trelawney Multipurpose Complex. Spot Valley getting by Mushet. Three goals to nil. A game that Spot Valley perhaps should have had more goals. But Keanta Clark was among the goal scorers and he played a critical role in this encounter in zone d of the da costa cup mushed had their own opportunities in the first half didn't offer much in the second half and perhaps as expected they still remain winless and in this next game without a goal the third time for them this season not scoring a goal and a losing spot valley though they move atop the standings while william nil they come up against cedric titus in a short while here's a full time score three for spot valley no goal for mushet here's a full time highlights 
action got off and it was Spot Valley in the red testing Osman Holt in goal for Mushet. Mullings had wonderful delivery there and Wilson unable to get the header on target they continue to push forward Mullings here in the half space took too much time and Hunt there came across and spoiled the party for him another opportunity this time was from Wilson testing Osman Holt another chance and Lawrence unable to get it on target after a wonderful first take Mushet had perhaps an awkward opportunity Keanu Calvin set this one high and Dravid Grant had to play it onto the upright and it saved them in the end that ball was swirling and causing all sorts of problems for Grant another great opportunity Curlew came forward and was stretching didn't get any power on the strike Here's the full-time stats. Eight shots on target from 19 attempts of Swat Valley. Four from eight from Mushet. Nine fouls far than from Mushet. A yellow card apiece. Four offsides of Spot Valley. One for Mushet. Four corners for Spot Valley. And they had the lion share position. 62% and three goals to the good. They're the winners today. We stand by with Gerard. He has the player of the match. Yeah, thanks, Dean. And the player of the match, no other than the number 10 for Spot Valley, Kenyatta Clark. Hold on to that, young man. Congratulations to you. And let me have a chat with you. Uh, one goal, one assist. How would you rate your performance? Performance, we rate 8.2. Yeah, I think we done better. Yeah. yeah. Uh, where do you think you could have improved? In the midfield. Yeah. yeah man. Uh, what was the strength of your Spot Valley team, though, to beat this Mouchette side? The strength... Yeah, in the first half, we played very bad, but in um, the second half, we come and win the game. Yeah. And I'm um, got the three points. Well, you've gone to the top of the table. We don't know for how long. Yes. Uh, but how happy are you with this, how the season is going so I'm far? I'm very happy because we are doing extremely well. Yeah, man, because last season we didn't that good, but this season we are complete. All right, thank you so much and congratulations yeah. to you. All right. Yeah, that was King Atta Clark there, the coach, the man of the match. Now, time to talk to the Mushek coach, uh, Damien Clark. Uh, who, of course, will be coming in here looking for certain aspects of improvement for his team. Coach, did you see the improvements that you were looking for from your team? Well, um, the first half was like a sunrise in the morning. It was bright. It was full of hope. It was full of cheer. But the second half was like when JPS come and cut off your, your light. I mean, it was dark. It was half of what we did in the second half and that, in the first half, and that was not good enough. We concentrated for the, the, the full 45 minutes in the first half, but the second half somehow we, we, we lost the plot. Um, it's a bitter one to swallow, I mean, to force this past your throat, it's really bitter because, you know, I, I, we were in there until we gave up, um, especially in the defence. Uh, come on, man, um, the goalkeeper made a save of the penalty, reward the goalkeeper, I mean, help him out. But we, we, we learn from our mistakes, and as we said, um, it's a building process. We look on the positive, because our season is the positive to build on. So we're just looking on the positives, and hopefully we can develop um, further, and we get one of them right, and that will build something. Yeah, uh, just tell me a little bit about how you feel about having your first game on television. I thought the boys started out really well, and then they gave it away. Well, um, I told them, you know, that... Even if you don't play it in front of cameras, eyes um, have a generation lingering. So the, the mind will never forget. The cameras can be destroyed, but the mind, you know, so they, 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 they played the first half to instructions. They were not frightened by the camera on TV. And, you know, I think if we play more 
in front of the camera like the first half, then we will be a force to reckon with. But it's a building process. It's like the house. We dig the foundation and we lay the blocks and we try to develop something spectacular. Right, Coach, thank you so much. All right, it's a pleasure, sir. Yeah, that was Coach Damien Clark there of Mushet High. Now time to talk to the other Damien, the, the winner Damien of Spot Valley, Damien Nelson. Uh, Coach Nelson, uh, you did get the three points, two goals, but do you, th well, three goals, do you think you should have gotten more? Yes, we should have gotten more, but, you, you know, it's a one o'clock sun and uh, the boys them start off well, but not scoring the chances that Moshe push us back and they get chances and we soak up the pressure and we take them out the, the second half, we just tell them just be consistent, play what we do in training and we get three goals. Yeah, there's still a lot of football to play, but right now you're in a very comfortable position. Four games, four wins, and of course at the top of the table, four now. Uh, but of course, you haven't played the leaders. Well, the, the leaders coming into today, William Nib, who play later. But when you look at this, how likely is it that you're going to top the table, and would you prefer to play at the top all right, or to advance at the top of the right, table? It's, uh, it's going to be a difficult game because it's going to be away. So uh, we have to just get some rest tomorrow and uh, go back to the drawing board on Monday and then put in things in place and then we, we go at it for Tuesday. All right, thank you so much, Coach, and congratulations to you yeah, too. You're most welcome. Yeah, we heard a lot from the two Damien's. Of course, Damien Clark for Mushet had a lot to say. Quite philosophical, you could say. But Damien Harris, the winning coach, Full-time score, Spot Valley 3, Mushet nil. Spot Valley move to the top of the table in Zone D in the Dakosta Cup. We take a break. We'll be back for the second of the doubleheader, Schoolboy Football 2024. <laughs> Finish the league and beat her. Which show that I collect the golden boat and be the favorite with the people. Yo, it's a busy fans are roll out about the flag from people. Looking at the crowd, but loan and support us from school and community too. People don't mean that this land, some of the support rate, they want some of what you put on TV too. Country and Tony on I be one reason. It's a school boy football. Come to look one look all. Which team are the best of the best of the best of the best of the